Marcin Held, Satoshi Ishi, Marcin Tybura. Trenuj w sprzęcie dla najlepszych. Wejdź na groundgame.com. Um, Macy, I feel like a lot of people are boiling this fight down to, you know, Alexa's great boxing, but Macy Barber just has to get her down to the mat and that's a wrap. Can you explain why it's not always that simple? You know, I mean, that's that's how a lot of people could look at it because it's true. She does have great striking, but I'm also known for my ground and pound and my ability to finish on the ground. Uh, but for me, you know, I feel like it's not just... Oh, Alexa has great striking. I know that I have great striking as well. That's all we've been focusing on um, ever since, you know, uh, my last fight, the fight before, you know, it's always continuing to evolve. So uh, my striking has improved, my grappling has improved, and so is my wrestling. So, um, but yeah, fights are never going to be just like, oh, this is a, a one and done. Like, it's never going to be a simple, it's a fight, you know, anything can happen. So um, you can expect a standing on the grappling, wrestling. Uh, it can go just about anywhere. I know that you're always working hard in the gym. Obviously, the injuries slowed that down a bit, but you know, you're know you very married to the game, so to speak. You're young in your career. What is something that you've you know, finally gotten good at in terms of just the fight game that maybe you weren't you know, so great at earlier in your career? You know, I think one of the biggest things for me and just in overall like training and evolving as a, as a fighter and athlete is just the maturity. It's not just, um, not just the training. It's also the recovery. It's also the nutrition. It's also just the mental preparation. And I think just being able to fully train and learn everywhere is, has helped me a ton. And, um, for me, it's, I don't, I don't just want to be a good fighter. I want to be a, a good professional athlete. I want to be a good overall human and, and just like my whole body, you know, like everything. And I want it to all be a hundred percent and the best I can be. Yourself and Sean O'Malley still remain come from season one, kind of like the faces of contender series. 2020, several guys had a chance to headline UFC events. None of them got the win. You versus Jojo Calderwood would be a great main event on a fight night. Do you feel like you could be the one to kind of get that first main event victory for the Contender Series guys and girls? I do. I think it'd be a great idea, especially because I'm young. We both have good followings. Uh, it's, it's a big fight. And uh, Contender Series, you know, the Contender Series has done amazing um, with all the fighters that have come up through. And you're going to see a lot of us young prospects. And you're going to see a lot of us not just young prospects, but us become the contenders and become champions. So I'm super excited and I would love to take that spot first. My final question, I'm asking all of the fighters this. You guys are fighting on Valentine's Day weekend. What is Macy Barber's idea of a romantic Valentine's Day? Uh, you know, I actually don't know yet. Um, but I have, honestly, this fight is, it has been the main focus and, um, it's been a bummer to not have everybody be able to be here with me, you know, my friends, my family, but uh, my family is actually on their way right now so that I can spend the, the day with them afterwards. So I'm probably going to be spending it with uh, my family, my friends. Hey, thank you, Macy, and good luck. Thank you. We will take the next set of questions from Martina Kaluch with In the Cage. Hello, Hope, do you, do you hear me? Sorry. Hello. My knee? My, uh, oh, hello, Macy. Hi. Uh, <laughs> just just wanted to make sure that you hear me because I had some technical oh, problems yeah, further. Okay. Macy, just uh, three questions from me. Uh, first of all, I would like to know what kind of lesson did you take from this fight uh, with Roxanne Modafferi? Uh, I think for me, the lesson I learned was just overall just um, patience. And it wasn't just in the fight. It was mainly after the fight that I learned that, you know, patience and and just the mentality of being able to, to, to learn in different ways. Okay. And fighting in co-main event, uh, is it like some additional stress for you? No. Uh, you know, things happen. You know, the co-main event fell through with Chris Weidman getting uh, positive. So, um, obviously, that, that sucks for the him and his opponent. But 
I'm definitely excited to be able to be moved up to co-main event. You know, that's just closer to being main event, and I feel like that's where we belong. So I'm excited. I'm sure that you've heard some words from ESPN presenter Stephen Smith that, and he said that uh, he doesn't like to watch women punching their face each other, and he doesn't wa want to watch women MMA at all. Uh, what's were, what would be your message for Stephen Smith and all those people, mainly guys, who don't like women MMA? You know, I feel like for for females, we are in a male dominated sport, but that doesn't mean that that we can't do that as well. You know, we are very good and, and you've seen it with some of the best fights in in all of MMA have come from women. You know, uh, Yoana versus Whaley is a great example of that. And that was something that people are always gonna remember. And for, for people like Steven Smith and all the haters, most of them can't even throw a punch. So I'm there's a lot of th opinions that I have on that. Um, but really I've been focused on this fight and I've just been waiting uh to be able to say what i want to say about different things like that to for the end of the fight of course thank you very much have a great fight thank you yeah we will take our next set of questions from damon martin with mma fighting hey macy uh you know coming back from the injury you know uh Medical science has advanced so much in, in, the, in recent years to where, you know, a knee injury like yours is no longer the career changer it used to be. As you come back from that, how have you felt in terms of, you know, your confidence on the knee, things like that? Because, again, I know that is a, a big deal, especially for a fighter like yourself who is so dynamic with your kind of explosive takedowns and things like that. How was that coming back? And, and I hear a lot of fighters say they actually feel better, you know, after, after coming back from something like that. For me, I feel like I had the best surgeon in the world. I had the best therapy in the world. I had a great team behind me. And on top of that, I'm 22. So I feel like overall for me to have such a serious injury, it was a blessing that it came at such a such an early time in my career because I have the, the youth on my side to be able to heal and I had the best team in the world to help me. So yeah, I do feel actually like a better fighter and a better athlete and um, just, I feel like my movement and everything is stronger uh through the injury just because of how much recovery and how much focus we were able to put on training my legs and and making sure that everything was strong and ready to go i know you've worked with a lot of different coaches you know during your career i know for this camp you're working with mike valley and izzy martinez the team out in chicago uh how much has that team added for you i know talking to mike valley when he was working with felice harry it said that you know, he's built a really strong program, especially for the women's fighters in his gym. So how much has that team added to you as you come back for this fight? It's been huge. You know, Mike Valley is, a, is an awesome coach. Izzy Martinez, I've known him a long time. He's an awesome coach. Uh, they're both very different personalities. You know, Mike is a lot more laid back, more technical. And Izzy's super technical, but he's also like a go-getter, like a go, go, go. Um, and he's just he's good energy to have around and i'm very bummed that i can't have him here tonight uh for, your, for saturday but um overall i mean the camp has been amazing i've had every single day of every single practice has been focused on me and what we need to do for this fight and for the future fights so um it's been a really strong strong camp and there's been a lot of women that i've been able to work with um and also for me it wasn't uh moving from milwaukee to chicago was was not because you know the last camp that i was at was bad it was just because i wanted to make sure that the focus was on me and the the training partners that i had were my size and uh, a lot more women so that's what we did when you first got to the ufc macy you had no problem setting high expectations for yourself saying you wanted to be the youngest champion in, in company history obviously you can't predict a knee injury you know, knocking you out for a year but obviously, as you come back now, like, you know, what kind of goals, what kind of expectations are you putting on yourself as you step into this fight and, uh, and kind of reintroduce yourself to the flyweight division? I always want to set high expectations. That's I'm never going to shoot and, and aim low and, and set low goals. That's never like that's not something I'm ever going to do because it, it's not satisfying. I want to aim big and I want to go for for big things because. Um, for me, the, the bigger the goal and the bigger the dream, the, the higher the reward. So, um, and the more I can push, you know, I want to push and I want to grind and I want to grow to be the best that I can. And I want to shoot for, for big things. So, um, the goal and the ambition is still there, even from when I started inside with the UFC. 
Last one for me. You know, you fought on big stages and you've had a lot of attention since you arrived in the UFC. But as you come back to this fight, it's obviously going to be a little more important just because of the time off and the injury. But you are stepping into a co-main event on a pay-per-view. Uh, do you feel like this is an opportunity for you to really shine and kind of remind you know, the rest of the flyweight division from Valentina Shevchenko on down? You know that you are here and that you are still coming for the, for everybody in the division because this is a you know kind of a bright spotlight for you to fight under. This is this is a huge fight, especially being like you said, co-main event um, against a tough opponent, and it is. I'm coming off an injury. I'm coming off a loss, so a lot of things are 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 going to be huge and really good and really big when I when I win. Um, and I'm super excited to be able to show all the flyweights that I'm still here and I'm still coming. And I know that I don't have to show them because they already know. Thank you, Macy. We will take the next set of questions from Cote Cruz with Four to Win MMA. Cote, please go ahead. See, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I just had a technical difficulty. I'm so sorry. How you doing, Macy? Good to talk to you. Same. Good to you. Well, uh, being a young prospect, it's a rite of passage to have the octagon jitters, the first UFC loss. You had both in the span of two years, I guess. Uh, what could you say are the biggest lessons on your UFC career so far? Uh, it's been a crazy ride. You know, yes, I've had the octagon jitters. I've had the injury. I've had a loss. I've had, I've had a lot of things, and I feel like all of those have taught me a lot of different things. You know, everything that um, I've experienced within my career in the UFC has, has been new. It's, it's always changing. It's always, always evolving. Um, and there's just a lot of things that I've learned and, um, it's made me just overall, I feel like very wise in, in being just 22 and I, and I, I'm like super blessed to be able to be here. You've done a lot of preparation at Valley Flow Striking. Uh, Belal is fighting soon. Nacho is set to debut in April. What can you tell me about the spirits of the team at this time with you and all the guys getting ready to, to fight? All the guys at the team are, are they're go-getters. They're always grinding. Every time I go to the gym, they're all always there. They're, they're always training. Even after practice, they're doing the extra things. So being around that kind of energy has been, um, it's been really refreshing. Uh, to be able to be around people that they just genuinely love what they do. You know, they're always happy. It's always good energy and they're always working hard. So um, I'm excited for us and for, for all of the things that we're going to achieve in 2021. Well, uh, you're working your jiu-jitsu with Coach Rodriguez, am I right? Uh, I'm sorry, say that again? You're working on your jiu-jitsu with Coach Rodriguez, right? Uh, yeah, we've been training uh, at Valley Flow, yes. With him. Yes. Are you prepared to enforce your will if the fight goes to the ground? <laughs> yeah, we are always we're always prepared. And uh, Coach Alberto is uh, he's been awesome. Uh, the top game, the pressure, everything has been um, really focusing on what we already have been doing, but just making it just that much better. Grasso has been a big name in the organization for a few years now. What do you think a victory over Alexa can do for you in terms of future opportunities? I feel like a win over Alexa is, is big. You know, it's obviously big because like I've said in the past, she is a big following. She's a strong fighter. She's a tough fighter. She's been around for a while. She's got a, a solid record against a lot of solid fighters and a win against her shows um, a lot of, a lot of things because, you know, she hasn't just fought girls who you're like, who's that, you know, she's fought um, Carolina Kovacavich. She's fought uh, Tatiana Suarez. She's fought some tough girls. So, uh, a win over her is going to show uh, where it belongs. Final question from me. As a Chilean, I need to ask about the relationship between you and Nacho Bamondes and Caro Gallardo. How is the day-to-day -day with the Chilean colony there in Chicago? I love those guys. Uh, I train with Caro every, basically every single day. Um, she's, she's around my side. So we were sparring, we were training, we were, we were doing all the drills together. Um, I love her. She's, she's becoming a good friend of mine. And um, same thing with Nacho, you know, he's just a little bit bigger. I can't really train with him uh, as much. He helps a little bit with the movement, but aside from that, it's just, he's in the gym. So they're a lot of fun to be around. And just, like I said, the vibe around the gym has been, um, it's been refreshing, you know, again, they love what they do. Uh, and that's their, that's their life. And I'm excited to see uh, both of them have great success in their careers.
And I'm excited to see you compete on Saturday as well. Thank you so much for your time, Macy. Good luck. Thank you. Thank you so much, Macy. That is all the time we have for you. We appreciate it. Well, thank you.